Hi there, my name is Mahmoud Shilla, and I'm here today to welcome you to this mini series on getting started with the Raspberry Pi. I'm a technology enthusiast, maker, educator, and consultant with years of experience in IoT, software engineering, automation, and Raspberry Pi projects, where I specialize in educating on the Raspberry Pi on YouTube. Whether you're looking to explore electronics for the first time or take your tinkering skills to the next level, I'm here today to guide you through the journey so you're definitely in the right place. We'll be talking about Raspberry Pi on a conceptual level, and then we'll be talking about how to write our first program with the Raspberry Pi, so we will be getting hands-on with them in this course as well. So let's take a quick look at what we'll be covering in this mini-series. We've structured it to be beginner-friendly, hands-on, and practical, so by the end of it, you will have a solid foundation to start building your own Raspberry Pi project. Projects. First, we'll talk about an introduction to Raspberry Pi. We'll start by answering the big questions. What is a Raspberry Pi? What can you use it for? And why it's such an incredible tool for learning and creating? Next, we'll be setting up your Raspberry Pi. So I'll guide you through the essentials to get it up and running from installing the operating system to enabling remote access so you can control it without a monitor. Next, blinking and LED. So here's where the fun begins. We'll dive into the GPIO pins and learn how to control them with Python by making an LED blink your first hands-on project. Then building a weather station. So we'll use a real sensor to create a simple weather station. You'll learn how to collect and display data, making it a practical, exciting step forward. Finally, we'll wrap things up with a recap of everything we've learned and talked about, and that will be all. So let's get started with part one, an introduction to the Raspberry Pi, and see why it's such an amazing platform for makers and learners alike. I will see you in the first lesson. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad you're here for the first lesson of our Raspberry Pi mini series, and that is the introduction to Raspberry Pi. Today, we're going to explore what makes the Raspberry Pi so unique, why it's been such a hit worldwide, and the many ways it can be used. So whether you've heard about it before or this is all new to you, by the end of this lesson, you'll know exactly what this tiny computer can do and why so many people love it. So what is the Raspberry Pi? Well, the Raspberry Pi is a small and affordable computer that packs a big punch. It was developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in the UK, and it was first launched back in 2012, so more than 10 years ago, with the goal of making computing and programming accessible to everyone. The name Raspberry is a nod to the tradition of naming early computer companies after a fruit, like Apple, while Pi reflects its original focus on the Python programming language. It's designed for learning, experimentation, and creativity. At its core, the Raspberry Pi is a tool for anyone who wants to explore coding, electronics, or build cool projects. What makes it truly special is its ability to bridge the gap between software and hardware. You can write just a few lines of code and see immediate results, like controlling an LED, reading data from a sensor, which is what we'll be doing today, or automating a simple task. Despite its small size, it's incredibly powerful and versatile, capable of running full operating system, hosting web servers, running applications, or even handling tasks like machine learning. So whether you are a beginner trying to learn the basics or a professional building prototypes, the Raspberry Pi has something to offer you, which is why it has become a favorite among hobbyists, educators, and engineers worldwide. So why was the Raspberry Pi even made? Well, the Raspberry Pi was created to solve a pressing problem, and that is around 2012, fewer people were learning how to code or pursue careers in computer science, creating a growing skills gap. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation at the time set out to address this by developing an affordable yet easy to use computer that could make programming accessible to everyone. Ever since, it's been inspiring millions of learners, hobbyists, and innovators. With its versatility, low cost, and strong community support, the Raspberry Pi has become a cornerstone for STEM education in DIY projects worldwide. Okay, so one thing to know really quick is that the Raspberry Pi isn't just one model anymore. Now, 13 years later, the, the, the company has started developing many different types of hardware, and that is there are many different types of Raspberry Pis, essentially. The most popular one and the one we'll be using today in this course is the Raspberry Pi model. Today, we'll be using the 4B version. So the higher the version, the more powerful it is, and it has typically more enhancements. I believe up to the time of this video, there is a 5 model, so that's a little more powerful than the 4B. That is overkill. We do not need that today, but if you do have a 5 model, you can follow along with this tutorial as well. Now, the Raspberry Pi 4B is more than powerful enough to, to do the projects we are going to go over today. Perfect for coding, sensors, and even downloading applications, and even machine learning as well. You could do machine learning with the 4B if you're interested in that. There's also the Raspberry Pi Zero model, so this is a very popular one on the left. This is super small and affordable, great for portable and lightweight projects. 
And if you're into hardware programming or simply want something super lightweight, there's the Raspberry Pi Pico on the right. This is probably their, new, their newest board, I believe, and they even have the Pico W board, which supports internet. It is a microcontroller designed board for embedded systems, really powerful for the cost, and you can even get these boards for less than $10 at a time. So that's pretty cool. So it just shows that this organization has really evolved so much in the past 13 years. But all in all, we will be using a regular Raspberry Pi, and that is the Raspberry Pi 4B model. But depending on what you want to do, there is probably a Raspberry Pi out there that fits your needs, whether it's you're running on a low budget or want something super high powered, there probably is a Raspberry Pi out there that can suit your application's needs. So what can the Raspberry Pi actually do? Well, it can do a ton of things to answer that short, but let's give some specific examples here. First of all, it can be used as a regular desktop computer, running a full operating system where you can browse the web or just simply write code, just as you would use a Windows or a Mac. It's also great for controlling sensors and other electronics, making it perfect for IoT and automation projects. Do you love gaming? It can also be used to emulate retro games. You can even host a web server or turn it into a media center to stream your favorite movies. The possibilities are endless, and just a quick Google search will show you all the incredible ways this computer has been used across the span of time. So the Raspberry Pi isn't just for personal projects. It's being used across the world in many amazing ways for real life applications. People use it for home automation a lot of the times, like controlling lights in their house, cameras, and even thermostats. It's the backbone of many IoT devices out there, including weather stations, which is what we'll be building today, air quality monitors, and smart agriculture systems. In robotics, it powers creations ranging from line-falling robots to drones and even autonomous vehicles. Schools and universities use it to teach students coding, electronics, and artificial intelligence, while researchers leverage its power for data collection and analysis in remote or challenging environments. I mean, it's truly been a game changer, fostering innovation across industries and empowering users of all ages to create solutions to real-world problems. So why has the Raspberry Pi been so popular over the years? I think that stems from many reasons. The first one probably being its affordability, especially nowadays with models starting at just $10, like the Pico, Pico W models. So that pretty much makes it accessible to almost everyone wanting to learn electronics uh, across any price range, which is, which is amazing. It's also incredibly versatile, which we discussed. That is a given. It could be used for pretty much any IoT or electronics project. I mean, you just Google it and you'll probably find some way to do a project with a Raspberry Pi out there, whether it's a drone, a helicopter, you name it. Someone has used Raspberry Pi to do that thing. Beginners love it, especially because it's easy to get started. There is a massive community sharing tutorials, projects, and advice. Plus, it's open source nature means you can experiment and learn without limits. So whether you're a student, a hobbyist, or a professional, the Raspberry Pi proves that powerful technology can be within everyone's reach. So that sums it up for the intro to Raspberry Pi. I hope you learned a lot, and now you understand why the Raspberry Pi was developed, the various models that exist, and why the Raspberry Pi itself has remained such a cornerstone in the IoT and electronics community for more than a decade since 2012. Now that we've covered what the Raspberry Pi is and why it's so incredible at a high level, it's time to get more hands-on. In the next lesson, I'll guide you through setting up your Raspberry Pi, that is installing the operating system and enabling remote access. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.